I've been doing some work with MIDI controllers just to get them set up and use them for some uh, control related purposes and I thought it was a good excuse to do a really quick video on how to use them. So at the moment I have this an LPD8 little sort of laptop controller plugged in, laptop pad controller, it's got eight pads, eight dials and then four different programs that we can go through so we have four different variations of all of those pads that we can get keys for. This does have a nice piece of software that you can set up but that's more aimed at something like uh, passing it into music software so you can see whether a pad is a, a toggle or a momentary button, things like that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the raw values and then do things with them in Touch Designer. So even though I've got the pad plugged in and ready to go, if I bring in both a chop or a dat MIDI event or in, nothing happens. If I click buttons, you can see that there are no values coming in and I do have a warning and it's saying it couldn't open the MIDI device interface. And if we do that, we can have a look at our current MIDI devices and there is none. And that's because we need to set that up in the MIDI device mapper. So first thing I'm going to do is in device mappings, I'm going to create a new mapping, take my LPD8, which is detected by Windows, output it to whatever you want. We aren't actually going to output any MIDI here, so it doesn't matter where that goes to. And at the moment, we're going to leave the MIDI map blank. We'll come back to that in a minute and have a look at how we can actually make a map for our, our device and get the buttons and slider values that only we need. So now that that's done, we can see that both the MIDI end chop and the MIDI event and MIDI and dat are recording data. So whether I do the sliders or I press the buttons, you can see that things are happening. With the MIDI end chop, it works on the basis that if it finds a button when you push it, it will add a value for it. So if I do something like go to program four and then turn a dial, you can see it starts adding channels based on whatever the button and corresponding data is. Uh, for example, if I push this one, which is channel, it's pad five on program four, I get channel four, number 44, and that is corresponded down here. But I want to make it so this is much tidier and I don't want to rely on something like the MIDI in chop that can change its channel values depending on what's happening. Because say I moved laptop or changed, uh, changed setup, I want it to be able to remember the, the buttons and pads I've got using the MIDI in map. And you'll see this is still blank and that's because we don't have a map created yet. Back in the MIDI device mapper, I'm going to go to the devices page and add a new device. I'm going to call it the LPD8. And then if you have a quick look at the pre-existing pages, there are a, a page for buttons and a page for sliders. In this demonstration, our dials are going to be sliders. Uh, that's just something to remember that if it, just because it doesn't move up and down doesn't mean it's not a slider. Buttons have a, an on and an off toggle and sliders just have a, a pass variable button. So in this case, it's looking for a button which is a, a definer for them. You can see the message that comes through. The, the next value is normally always the, the channel that it's on. For example, here, this is one of the, this is, I'm on program four. I can tell looking at this message, I'm on program four. Uh, I'm using the fifth slider or the fifth dial and this is the value that's coming off of it. So I'm gonna go back to program one and check that I'm using my first slider there. And we need to, to plug that in there. So I'm going to do, I'm going to delete all these slider variables and I'm going to add eight because I'm only going to use program one and all eight slider values. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I have eight variables cre created. If I uh, go back to my device mappings, add the LPD8, you'll see that if I delete all these buttons as well, that the chop is already populated with the eight channels. And even if I twist a dial, nothing happens because we've not linked them together yet. So in the device map, I go to my first slider. So S1, I'm gonna make the this slider here. I pass it the information that it gets. So I move it, and you can see the MIDI console here. 
So I need to pass it this message to tell it to look for. So I'm going to do B0, 0, 1, and then I'm doing, going to do two dashes because the message at the end is the actual value that we want to pass on. And all things going smoothly. So there you go, I just refreshed the, the map and you can see that now my S1, my value S1, is now increasing depending on where the, the slider is. So that is at, at minimum, that's at 50% and that's it all the way around to one. Now I have a value that I can do anything I need with inside Touch Designer. I'm simply gonna recreate that for all eight of my sliders. But this time I'm going to be careful to give them the correct channel numbers. And just while we're using such small numbers, they are always numeric, numerical. So if I, for example, use K8 slider, you can see that it does have the 08 message that we added at the bottom there. Refresh it. And now all of our sliders correspond to a value that we can set and use elsewhere. Buttons are a bit more delicate. By default, the MIDI in map won't use velocity, which basically means if a button's pushed, it'll either be one or zero. But you can see we actually get loads of different values when I push it. One to seven is the highest that a MIDI channel can go to, which means on. Anything else is the velocity. So if I hit it really hard, which you can probably hear, that's giving me a full value on the actual on. If I push it softly, you can see I'm only getting a really small value because I'm touching it so gently. By default, this won't accept that, but it will understand the message that we send it. So what we do is we add a channel and we'll get our button one variable. And let's look at pad one on program one. The on message is 90, the off message is 80. So I'm gonna tell it to look for that. I'm gonna do the on message is 90. It's then going to be whatever the pad identifier is. In this case, it's 24. That actually relates to a MIDI note, but as I'm saying, we're not using that here. And then, because I want to be able to pass velocity, I'm going to pass two variables, just so it sends this message that is the actual velocity that we're pushing the pad down. On the flip side, when we turn it off, you can see that they all always equal the same value. So I'm just going to do 80, 24, and I'm actually going to do 0, 0 for off. So now, if we refresh this, if I push my pad, oh, I've obviously done the wrong message for off. Oh, that's why it's a, uh, we want 7F. So there you go. Now when you can see when I push the pad on, it goes on. When my finger's off it, it's off. If I include velocity, I can start to get decimal values or float values coming out of this. But I can still push it really hard and get that full one value. That depends on what you're using it for, whether you need that or not, but it's just useful to know. You can completely bypass that. Oh, that's the wrong one. You can completely bypass that by just uh, passing a value of uh, F7 would be 100% on. 7F, sorry. But we want to pass the the velocity just in case we do want to use it. And again, I've got eight pads, so I'm gonna do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna copy the messages. And then I know it's 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, uh, something to be aware of is this isn't using base 10 calculation so you'll notice that since we have a b c d e f g values i think it'll go up to that means that instead of wrapping 29 to 30 it's actually going to do 20 is it going to 20 it might wrap around to 30 a let's have a look so if i pad 7 and 8 there you go 2a and 2b uh just something to be aware of so it didn't jump to 30 it would do 2a to b to c to d to e f g and then it would do 30 31 32 etc just something to be aware of same for this uh, so to b to a 29 28 
seven, six, five, four. Okay, all things going smoothly. Give that a refresh. We've got all eight buttons, uh, or eight buttons, eight sliders. And now I can push them and any level of contact gives me a one. Anything else gives me a zero. And the same, the dials are all still controllable however we want. I can include velocity. Include velocity and then get variables off that as well. So you could control something like, we could do this. Now I know that these will always be the same values. I could have an, oh, not that, I want an audio file in. Audio file in, an audio file out. It's gonna be loud, I'm sorry. Let's, so let's not play that. Let's change that for, uh, I should have some samples in here, samples. Maybe I don't. Music and audio samples. Audio piano. What does that sound like? I kind of just want a single piano, now. that's what I'm looking for. Maybe I don't. Organ might be better. There we go. Turn off repeat. So now every time that we cue it, we could play that note. And then we could link the, so let me select out, let's do pad one, which is B1, and slider one, which is S5. And then I'm going to link S5 to the volume, and then B1 to Q pulse. So that cues it. And now I know as long as I take this LPD8 or an LPD8 and this patch with that MIDI device map, this chop will always work. Uh, and that was just a super quick introduction to MIDI in Touch Designer. <laughs>